At Team Toyota, they've been selling and servicing new and used Toyotas in your community for over 50 years. And you can reserve your next new Toyota with them today. You'll get a realistic timeline, and even in this crazy market, they won't charge you over MSRP. Or don't wait at all. With over 75 certified Toyotas, including a bunch of RAV4 and Highlanders, you can drive one home today. And you can always trust them to maintain your current vehicle. Their service and collision centers are high-tech, comfortable, and will save you time and money. Team Toyota can help you go anywhere you want, but they'll always be your hometown team. Just visit teamtoyota.net and choose from three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Hello and welcome to the Phillies Talk Podcast presented by Team Toyota. Corey and Jim here with you as always, and we're just about 48 hours away from opening day, depending on when you're listening to this, probably a little bit less than 48 hours away from Philly's opening day. MLB's overall opening day is Thursday. The Phils get started with the athletics on Friday. Uh, Jim, as we sit here two days before the season opener, the Phillies are wrapping up today in Florida. They're actually at Tropicana Field against the Rays, but a lot of those bubble decisions on the roster seem to be made on Tuesday. So the 28-man roster, the Phillies pretty much have it in place. Uh, It's going to be 13 position players, 15 pitchers. The biggest story on the opening day roster is that you have both of the young infielders, Bryson Stott and Alec Bohm, which we didn't expect a week ago, but that's how it shook out. Yeah, uh, Bryson Stott, former number one pick uh, in, uh, what, 2019, drafted as a shortstop out at UNLV. He projects as uh, their opening day third baseman. On Friday, uh, he's a left-handed hitter. They're facing a right-hander from Oakland. So um, I would imagine Joe Girardi will give him the start, you know, against the right-hander. Uh, and I think he's earned it, hit his way onto the team, played his way onto the team. Obviously, it was an opening at third base because Bohm didn't seize that job. Um, but Bohm, another number one pick, uh, makes the roster. There were questions whether he would, uh, whether he would be sent out to AAA, whether he would be traded. I think both, um, you know, scenarios were possible uh, and both remain possible but um, you know he's on the opening day roster I think uh, largely because they decided to only go with 10 relievers because uh, they had some health issues at the back end of the bullpen so they take um, take Bohm uh, and you know they open up with uh, 13 straight games in 13 days and um, shortened spring training veteran team I think Joe Girardi will be mindful of getting his guys rest as they continue to ramp up for the long haul. So uh, I think he'll sprinkle in um, Stott and Bohm a little bit, um, maybe around the diamond. Uh, Bohm maybe a day at first, a couple at, at third, and, and um, Stott can play three infield positions as he gets some of those veterans off their feet as they kind of continue their spring training mode because, like I said, spring training was shortened. But uh, uh, could be decisions to make uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, but, you know, it's up to those guys around the roster. They need to make those decisions tough on the Phillies. Um, um, James Norwood, uh, the pitcher they acquired from San Diego, um, you know, is not on the opening day roster. doesn't appear to be headed toward the opening day roster. I think it's safe to say he won't be on the opening day roster. Uh, but he could be ready soon, and that could um, force their hand to make a move. And uh, Odubel Herrera, probably in the next um, two, three, four weeks, um, could be back, and that could force their hand on a move. Uh, Mickey Moniak makes the opening day roster. That's a move, Herrera, that could affect him. But, again, once you're on that roster, um, you're, it's a great opportunity. Go out, play well, make it really hard on them. Make yourself indispensable. Uh, and then they'll have to go in a different direction when it comes time to, to make a decision. But, yeah, you're right. The 28 men, it appears that's their opening day roster. They haven't said it yet officially. It's not due till Thursday. And I am veteran enough and um, a, a long-time Dave Dombrowski observer. That guy is always up to something. And uh, so they can, you know, they can do stuff right up until they have to hand that roster into the commissioner's office. Trades are possible. So that's what it looks like, barring a late addition, barring a late trade. Uh, they're going to have to get Stott on the 40. Uh, that shouldn't be difficult. Um you know, you have Rafael Macharn has battled a hamstring injury. I, I think um, you could even – he might need some time to – you know, because he might have to, you know, need a full spring training and then time to get going. He could be a, 
60 day DL candidate. There are other guys at the back end of that roster. They could look to, to make a move on. So I don't think it'll be heavy lifting to get Stott on the roster, but uh, you know, barring a trade late acquisition, all systems go for Friday, Corey. One of the other last decisions, I guess, that was made was Connor Brogdon, who had not pitched well throughout spring training. The velocity was a bit down from last year. Last year, he mostly sat in that like 95, 96 mile per hour range with his fastball, and it was a few miles per hour lower throughout camp. But he appeared in a game Tuesday, pitched a scoreless inning, and he hit 95 several times. I think he even hit 96 once. That was enough for him to make the opening day roster, and it was a similar story two days earlier for Jose Alvarado, who had been slowed in camp by a minor neck issue. He got on the mound, threw in the high 90s. Joe Girardi said, okay, you made it. So I think you know some of that was owed to the fact that, as you mentioned, you have guys like James Norwood, who has been away from the team, uh, uh, Coonrod with a shoulder injury. Ryan Sheriff hasn't pitched since, I think, March 30th. So that, th- that kind of played into those decisions. But I guess one outing out of Brogdon was enough to to make Joe Girardi confident that he could take down some outs there in the sixth or seventh inning if called upon early in the season? I guess. I mean, we'll see. Um, they wanted to see that his velocity was trending in the right direction, and it, and it is. I don't know that that's going to give him confidence to go to – Brogdon in a leverage situation on Friday. I, I kind of think maybe just the opposite. They would try to um, use him in a non-leverage situation as he continues t- to build uh, arm strength. Um, he's still kind of in a spring training mode for me, at least. Um, you know, one day hitting 95, 96 doesn't mean you're, you know, ready for the season. So I still think they're ramping him up. Um, the good news is he's not hurt. Uh, doesn't appear to be hurt. And uh, that ramp up can still happen, but I think it. If 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 they're going to try to ramp him up here, I would think maybe non uh, low low leverage rolls the first the uh, outings or uh, appearances the first few times out, um, you know. But we'll see. They they do have, you know, their leverage guys. Obviously, the closer Knable and Hand. I think Hand. They're going to have to look at right out of the gate. Continue to see what you got. And, and well, you I was going to say. I was going to say also that it, it almost seems like Sir Anthony Dominguez has kind of like put himself in that spot that Brogdon would have been in entering camp you know, yeah. on, on the pecking order. He would appear to be, you know, you have the, the Knabel hand familia. I would think Sir Anthony Dominguez is probably going to be in the mix for setup duty early, right? Yeah, and yeah, I don't think Brogdon's there yet uh, in, in, in setup leverage. I don't think he's there yet. I think he's three, four, five good-looking outings um, – you know, from, from being there, from them, from ele- elevating to that role. So they're, you know, he, he's to me, the last guy that gets into the bullpen. Um, and he still has work to do. Uh, Sir Anthony was a real bright spot. I, I don't think you throw him in the eighth inning right away, but he could work his way there in a hurry. But I think Joe will probably look at the veteran guys, Familia and hand and Alvarado in that seven, eight range. Um, and uh, see if they can run with it. They certainly all have the track record, especially Hand and Familia, certainly have the track record to run with it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, neither one of them had sort of eye-popping springs, but they got track record, and sometimes it, all it takes is for the lights to go on, for their intensity to pick up and their performance to pick up. So I would say from the back out, Joe's going to probably look at Knable, Hand, Familia, Alvarado, um, you know, with Sir Anthony helping him get there as well. Um, with a chance to really work his way into leverage. Um, but getting back to Brogdon, I think he's got a way to, ways to go uh, before he's in those situations. Someone who did have an eye-popping spring was Mickey Moniak, especially there at the end. A lot of, lot of, uh, lot of power all of a sudden for Mickey Moniak. He actually hit 371 on the spring, entering the final day here. Five homers, four doubles. You wrote a piece at NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com just outlining uh, how – what seems like a small tip from Kevin Long has gone a long way. I mean, it's the kind of thing that when you read, okay, get closer to the plate, it doesn't seem like it should be so important, right? It doesn't seem like it should be such profound advice, but I guess it's the way that the message is delivered sometimes, right? Yeah, and kind of the point of that story was, um, you know, here's a young kid, super talented, um, and, and this had been pointed out to him in the past, and he just wasn't ready to hear it. And he even admitted uh, in the story that, you know, as a young player on the way up, sometimes you think you have all the answers and, it, you know, after a while you get slapped in the face by the game and this game will slap you in the face. And he got slapped in the face. And Kevin Long, a very decorated hitting coach, highly regarded hitting coach, maybe the best in the game, shows up at a time when um, 
after a really disappointing 2021, Mickey Moniak was ready to hear it. Uh, so he jumped on the uh, advice and, and the adjustment. And uh, I know it's just spring training. It's essentially practice, but the adjustment seemed to make a big difference for him moving closer to the plate. wasn't blocking out, driving the ball in the middle of the diamond. Uh, and then from that, you know what comes? Confidence. And when confidence comes, that's when you really take off. So had a great spring, earned his way onto the roster. Obviously, there were extenuating circumstances, Odubo Herrera um, going down. Uh, but, you know, Mickey, you know, it's, it's a hell of a story in that, gosh, just a couple of weeks ago, Joe Girardi basically eliminated him from, from, from contention for the center field for a piece of the center field job. And uh, before you know it, Odubel's down, Hazley is traded, and Mickey goes off. And now I would expect to see him him get get some time early on because you're going to have to continue to gauge him, continue to gauge if he's ready, possibly ride what was a hot bat in Clearwater. Um, you got to use your guys. And, again, like I said earlier, once you get there, now that's a great opportunity. It's up to you to stay there. So he, he might be in a good place to, to finally um, stick. Uh, we'll see. But uh, – uh, definitely showing signs of maturity, and um, failure is a great teacher in this game. It can really shake you by, you know, grab you by the lapels and shake you and make you open to coaching, which maybe he wasn't open to as much as in the past. So, uh, good job by Mickey to go out there and earn it. He was the real him and Sir Anthony. I think probably two big surprises of spring training. Um, and then on the negative side, maybe Brogdon was a surprise that he didn't look so good. But you know, there's. Um, Looked good on the last day, but there's reasons he explained that um, he just had a tough time gauging when to ramp up during the lockout, when it was going to be go time for him. So, um, But no question, Mickey and um, Sir Anthony coming out of camp, uh, two bright spots. Now let's see what they can do it when the games matter. Well, so, I mean, Moniak's swinging a hotter bat right now than Matt Veerling. You know, Matt Veerling hadn't really been making uh, strong contact the last few days of camp, uh, and – you know, if you're playing the hot hand, you would think, especially facing a right-hander on opening day and Frankie Montas, might we see Mickey Moniak bat ninth? I would think that's a possibility uh, with the left-right uh, platoon matchup. I would think that's a possibility. Though even coming into camp, they were very high on Verling and seemed to want to give him a chance, give him a shot. So I don't, I'm don't. i fascinated to see what the open day lineup would be. But it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be um, beyond the realm of possibility that Joe rides the hot hand, goes with the platoon matchup and plays the uh, – Mickey and bats him at the bottom of the yard. We'll see. So there was a little bit of uncertainty earlier in camp about the Philly starting rotation. Was every gun? Was everybody going to be ready? It looks like everybody is going to be ready. Ranger Suarez makes his final start here on Wednesday. Uh, Zach Wheeler is supposed to face hitters in Florida on Thursday, which would be his, you know, his regular day to pitch. And that would line him up to start the Phillies fifth game of the season. Uh, it looks like the Phillies are going to go Nola Gibson, Eflin Suarez, Wheeler in that order. They've got to feel pretty good coming into the season, especially you know given the uh, the, the the fact that Suarez and Wheeler were a little bit behind schedule, and now they're ready to go. Zach yeah. Eflin, same there. Yeah, they got a good lineup, a uh, nice deep, uh, potentially explosive lineup, and they got a, they got a really nice rotation. Uh, I wouldn't say it's deep; it goes five deep. Um, you'd like to see it. You'd like to see that pitching depth. Uh, in that they could, you know, reach down and go six, seven, eight deep if they needed to, nine deep. Um, uh, but their top five is, is very uh, solid, uh, right from the top where it's strong, right to Kyle Gibson, I'd say, uh, where it's very professional and comp um, competent. I mean, they're, they're going to give, they should give you innings, um, which is a good thing, and uh, they should give you, um, you know, potential excellence. Um, I look for Nola. He had a lot, it was a tough year last year. But there was still a lot of good to it. Um, Wheeler should have won the Cy Young. Eflin's pitching for a free agent contract, and he's healthy, and he's he's talented. He's good. Suarez, um, if he wasn't the breakout, you know, he was definitely a breakout player on the Phillies last year, but if, could be the breakout talent in Major League Baseball this year, right, with a full season in the rotation. So there's a lot of reasons to like that rotation. It just needs to stay healthy. It needs to stay healthy because they don't go real deep beyond five. All right. Well, there's only one more day of non-regular season Phillies baseball, and then it's going to be a lot uh, in a very short amount of time. Jim said, I think, what did you say, 23 out of 24. It's also 51 games in the first 54 days. So you have three off days in the span of like, man, I don't even want to think about that. We're both going to be pretty busy, but, you know, it beats the alternative. Uh, the Phillies finish up today and went uh, in in Florida against the Rays. 
They are off Thursday, and then it starts Friday. Aaron Nola, Frankie Montas. Uh, Jim, last last uh, thought from you on the Oakland A's. It's not nearly as formidable a team as it was last season. It's actually a pretty soft uh, launching pad for the Phils, huh? No question. What's their opening day payroll? I mean, the Phillies have like $200 million plus on them. Yeah, it's uh, about a Philly and a third. That's what it is. It's like $35 million, somewhere in that vicinity. So the Phillies are more than $200 million more than them. Um, and they, you know, they, they, they traded away – their best player, Matt Olson. They traded away Matt Chapman, another great player. They traded away their projected opening day starter, the guy who was, you know, Sean Mania. Um, baseball's a tough game. <laughs> it's, it's tough to predict. Uh, starting pitcher can go out there and dominate you no matter what the payroll is. But they need to go out there and immediately win a series because um, schedule maker, I would say, has been kind to them out of the gate. Yeah, I'm looking at this A's projected opening day lineup. Tony Kemp, Stephen Vogt, Sean Murphy, Seth Brown, Jed Lowry, Stephen Piscotty, Elvis Andrews, Kevin Smith, and Christian Pache, who they got from the Braves in the Olsen trade. There's really no big power threat there. You know, anything can happen on any given day, obviously. But, yeah, it's uh, a series that should probably be advantage Phillies there out of the gate, and then they have the Mets right after that. So thanks for listening to the Philly Stock Podcast. Catch you later in the week.